Hello guys, welcome to our sixth um, Laravel Code Hub uh, tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating the registration screen and also, you know, handling the registration. So actually, storing the user in the database. All right. So to get started, first of all, under app. Well, let me show you. First of all, I have here loaded the local host Code Hub public. Um, um, and I have it loaded here and as you can see I changed here the code hub and login and register and what I did is I I, I Removed a bunch of the stuff from my previous tutorial the a bunch of the links that came with the bootstrap layout we copied so to do that let's go ahead and simply I'm gonna go ahead here and under resources views Layouts partials open the nav bar and just remove the links and here I changed the code hub name you know to uh, uh, sorry the default one to code hub and also remove the links and have login and register so what we will need for this tutorial it's let's go ahead and define the routes where this will go first of all so under HTTP routes I'm gonna go ahead and define the route group then this group gonna prefix this to off and the reason is because Laravel the framework itself comes with the um, with an auth controller so if I go here under controllers and auth controller under auth and auth controller comes with this uh, auth controller which is able to handle the login registration and logout for the user so this comes with the framework by default that means that we do not have to worry about writing the code you know the backend code to register a user log them in or log them out at all so this comes in pre-built with the with the framework itself and the reason is because a lot of uh, developers thought um, since most websites nowadays or web apps have some sort of authentication system they should just build it in the framework itself so we it could reduce the workload for the developers and that is very thoughtful so now that we have this in the routes, I'm going to group those together since they're going to the same uh, controller and I'm going to define the get request I'm going to call it register and as so I'm going to do a name route here I'm going to call it get register the get for the request since it's a get request and uses the auth controller so under the auth folder, auth controller, get register. And this is going to be responsible for displaying the view. I'm going to copy this. And we'll need another route here for the register. And this will be a post request. And this is when actually, when people, you know, um, put their, you know, uh, put their inputs in the form and then click register. Then this will actually do the registration and insert the user record in the database so I'm, this is going to be a post and I'm going to call this post get so now that we have the actual um, routes defined I'm going to go ahead here and going to put that route here to do that I'm going to simply just do a link to route here so I'm going to go ahead and do a open brackets and then close the bracket here and this is just the blade formatting and I'm gonna use this link to route function here and link to route we can simply um, do get a register which is the one that we defined and register so basically it means which path and what you want the text to be displayed. So if I go back here and I refresh my page, it should look the same. But now under here, we have the link to that view itself. So now we just need to create a view. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Bootstrap, getting started, examples. And they have an example here of a login. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna either copy the container and use this format or this template sort of thing and open here and I'm gonna go under views the views folder here and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this auth the reason we're doing this is because the 
defined uh, code built by the Laravel developer it looks under views for an auth folder and here it will look for the view itself I'm gonna go ahead and create this view and the view I will call it register so it will be looking for a register that blade that PHP view before we even start here let's go ahead and extend this is from our previous tutorial so we're gonna extend the main layout that we created layouts that masters that main once we've done that do the section page content paste that in here and do the include here also so uh, so we need to include the nav bar also so I'm gonna include layouts dot partials dot nav so if you refresh this here go back here go to our local host click on register we have this displaying here so now we have the email address and password what else do we need we don't need this remember me and I'm gonna remove this please join me and change the text here so let's go ahead and go back here so I will just create another input here and so this will be uh, I'm gonna remove this please join me and this will be we want the full name so we're gonna just take the user's name as an input also full name and I'm gonna say here input name remove this remember me and let's go ahead and check our changes so we do have this three okay now another thing is let's go ahead and open your json that composer that json and in here I have a package called illuminate HTML so you guys can go ahead and copy this paste it under the require here and go ahead and open your command line and do a composer update to go ahead and download and install this so once it's done that go into your app and then sorry yeah uh, go into your config folder and then add that PHP and under your providers here go ahead and add that provider so you can go ahead and type this illuminate HTML HTML service provider once you've done that go into your aliases and you can do a form and alias it as form and do the HTML uh, sorry illuminate HTML form facade once you've done that you can go ahead and use the package to create this HTML by itself so we're gonna go ahead and do that now so we should see the same result but using blade and the HTML package that we are that we brought in so we're gonna do a form open and this is equivalent to the tags we have here and here I'm gonna define a route so where do I want this request to go and now as you remember we defined a post register so we want this post request to go here I'm gonna give it another attribute an ID and I'm gonna call it the registration form so now we have the open tag which is equivalent to this open now we need a closing tag to do that we just type form close and once we've done that now we can go ahead and do the inside of the form so first of all we'll need a label same thing to get a label I'll type form label now the first parameter here in this label would be the ID of the label or which which uh, what is this label for and I'm gonna call it input or actually this is called it I'm gonna call it for name so this will be for the name and I want this display the text I want you the text that you want to be displayed I'm gonna call it full name and under here we will need a field we will need a field for the uh, name so this will type form and we want it to be a text field so I'm gonna type form text and now the first parameter here will be the name so the name will be name that's what I wanted to call so basically when the PHP backend looks for an ID will look you will find name 
and that's what it requires. And the second is the value. And the value, we don't want to pass anything. We want the user to pass in the value, so we'll put null. First will be an array. The third parameter is an array of attributes. So the attributes we want here, I'm going to go ahead and put in the first attribute, which will be an ID. And I'm going to give it an ID of name. Second attribute will be a class to style it the same way as we have it here. And a class will be form control. And, we'll, and then another will be the placeholder. And the placeholder, what well, we want the placeholder here to be, I'm going to call it full name. And finally, another one will be required. This attribute here. Okay. Now I'm just going to copy this. The second input we need is a email. Change this to email. I'm going to type here email address email changing here the IDs placeholder email address and the type here I don't want it to be text I want it to be email type the reason that that will add an additional check of making sure that when the user submits it is also an email and finally we want the password I'm going to type here password. Let me just copy this very fast. Password, password, and the password. There's no second parameter here. You just have the, the field name and also the attributes you want to pass in and password here. And we want to make this password type. So that means form password, and the reason we say password instead of text is because in the password, you, you, when user is typing, it will not show the text, the underlying text. It will just show, you know, dots or uh, stars or something like that. So people cannot see your password while you're typing it. Then the last thing, we'll need a button to submit it. So let's go ahead and do a form and a button. And let's go ahead and pass in. The first thing will be the text, so what we want to display. So I will just type register. And the second one will be the attributes. So I'm going to give it a class attribute here. And that attribute, and we'll pass in, just going to copy from down here the attributes, the classes. And I will give it a type attribute and submit. OK, so if we remove all, now we don't need this anymore because what this will do it was is gonna once it runs it will just generate the HTML that I've highlighted here so the same thing but this is how the Laravel and the package that we installed um, generates that and it also what it also does this is uh, it will actually put a put a hidden field here which will put a hidden token which will uh, rem which will um, remove the risk of us running into cross-site scripting requests basically people will have to be on our side so the requests have to be coming from our side instead of like people making requests from other sides to, to our side which could be dangerous so now let's go ahead and refresh this and it should look identical unless we miss something so let's see what we missed here we have everything we might have missed a comma or something let's see what the error was so unexpected colon on line 28 let's see here line 28 let's see we have Post register registration form label label. Oh, right here we missed the second column. And let's refresh it. And here's our form. Now to make a little slightly better here, let's go ahead and put breaks so we can leave a line break between this. That will help. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another break here. And finally one more break here save it refresh it and here we go now let's go ahead and control U, and we can see that the code generator was the exact same thing we had before but what you what you also did here you added a method a post method an action which was the path that we defined where we want this to be submitted and you see here the input which is the hidden token and this will help us re remove the risk of uh, running into cross-site scripting requests 
Okay, so now that we have done this, we can actually create a user. But to do that, we need to do some minor things. So open the auth controller under auth, auth controller here. And I'm going to remove this confirm as this will require, if you have that confirmed there, you will have to add an additional field here. And you can do that, add another password confirmation so people can type the same password and confirm that. But by removing this, people will not need to confirm the password again. So now that we've saved that, and we have all the inputs here correctly, we can actually go ahead and register the user and see him in, in the database, showing in the database. So let me go ahead here. I'm going to refresh it. I'm going to type in John Smith and J Smith at gmail.com and type a password and click register. Right now we don't see any messages created so we don't know if this user was created but actually what it does the built-in uh, authentication here what it does it actually registers user and also logs him in the reason we don't see anything change is because we haven't written the code to handle that and that will be in our next story when we do the login but let's go ahead and check if the user was actually registered and to do that open go to here you can go to localhost php my admin click on the database we created which was cwh Click on users and you should see a user here created. So we see John Smith, his email address, his password, which has been encrypted, and also the creation dates. So there you go, guys. That was simply we created the form and we actually registered the user. I hope you guys like this tutorial. And um, the next tutorial, we're going to go handle the login. So that, and then we can actually, when people log in, you'll be able to see their name and other, and the name respect and also log out. But we can, so we can do the login and then after that will be the logout. Thank you for watching guys. And uh, we'll be next, uh, stick around for the next tutorial, which will be the login.